Today's Tips to Jour mailbag question comes to us from Alaska. Robert, do you ever use epoxy for pore filling? And if so, how do you apply it? Matt in Alaska. Matt, thank you very much for this question. I actually get this question quite a bit. I've used just about every pore filling method and product available to man. And all of them work. Epoxy is just one of the tricks that I have up my sleeve for pore filling. Now, not all epoxies are created equal. I like to use a brand called Zepoxy. I get it from LMI, and I use item PT40. It's a finishing resin. It's not an actual glue like a normal epoxy. They do make other types of epoxy, but the finishing resin is the one I like. It's for leveling, and it levels and sands easily. So let's go over to the bench and I'll show you how I apply Zepoxy as a pore filler. So Matt, here's the Zepoxy finishing resin that I mentioned, PT40. It's actually a two-part product. It's got a hardener and a resin, and you have to mix them. Now, one of the reasons why I like the Zepoxy brand, unlike other brands, is that the mix uh, ratio is very forgiving. You don't have to weigh it out like a lot of other brands of epoxy. You can just eyeball it and mix it and it works just fine. If you happen to get a little bit more hardener than resin or vice versa, it's still gonna work for you. Because it is an epoxy, you wanna take precautions. I like to wear some gloves so that I don't get it on my skin. You also want to work in a well-ventilated area or perhaps even use a respirator. To mix the epoxy, I just eyeball it. I'm gonna start with the finishing resin here. And now the hardener, or vice versa, maybe I got that backwards. And one is a little heavier than the other, so it's very easy to just look sideways at it, and you can see how much you've put in there. And to me, it looks like I have a little bit too much of the clear. So I want to put a little bit more of the amber color in there. And since they don't mix until you mix them, you can kind of see how much of each one you have there. And these little plastic mixing cups work really well. Now I come in and just stir it. Now there are several different ways to apply epoxy. The way that I like to do it is to put it on and then uh, let it sit overnight. I'll scuff sand it the second day and I'll apply a second coat. After the second coat, I sand it all the way back to bare wood. The reason for that is because you could have compatibility issues with the, the top coats or the other finishes that you put on. Uh, another reason for that is that when you're sanding the second day, these layers are so thin, you're going to go through the wood and you're going to have blotchy areas. Now the remedy for that, and what some people like to do, is mix up a third batch and dilute it 50-50 with alcohol and then wipe it on with a paper towel like water. What that does is even out your color and then you go over the top with your top coats. Uh, I have heard of compatibility issues, however, there are things you can do like add a, a, a layer or a seal coat of shellac over the top of that and you're usually okay. I've done it both ways. I just prefer these days to go ahead and sand it all the way back to bare wood. So the z is now ready to go. I'm going to put a little bit on the surface. What I use is just a little squeegee. Notice that I'm working across the grain. I find that I get better results doing it that way than going with the grain. I'm also kind of working it down into the pores. Now, I failed to mention that before I even got to this stage, I thoroughly sanded my guitar up to 220 grit, and then I vacuumed all of the dust off and blew the dust out of the pores. You want to make sure those pores are open so that you can get the z or whatever uh, pore filler you're using down into them. If not, you're just covering them and then when you sand, you wind up uh, exposing the pore again. I'm not worried about keeping it extremely clean at this point. In other words, with no marks from my squeegee because I'm gonna hit it again tomorrow with a second coat. I also like to put newspaper on my bench uh, so that I can keep my bench clean. It also serves the purpose of allowing you to keep current on the, the events around the world as well as the, as well as the uh, local sales going on in your neighborhood at the stores.
Now you want to be careful not to get messy and get it all running over down the sides and dripping. So try and avoid that. When you get enough on the back, if you want to come in and you have excess on your squeegee, just begin wiping it on the side because that's where we're going next. By the way, Z-Poxy works very well under waterborne finishes that don't have that nice amber color. You can use the epoxy to pop the grain. All right, the first coat soaks it up quite a bit. And rosewood has craters for pores, so you'll wind up using it. Next thing we're gonna do is start working on the side. Now for working on the side, I'm using my vacuum clamp that I got from LMI. Makes it very convenient to work on the side. You'll notice that the top of my guitar is not sealed. That's because I'm not done building this guitar yet. I'm on day three of a private guitar building class with a student here, and we're getting a jump on our finishing by go ahead and starting our pour fill since it's a two day process. Uh, the neck is not completely carved. However, I have gone ahead and carved the heel so that I can get right up in there with my finishing resin or my pour fill. It's not the end of the world if you get a little bit on the top. However, try and avoid that so you don't have a lot of cleanup work to do on that later. Now, the nice thing about the LMI vacuum clamp is that you can spin it around, swivel it up and down, do all the kinds of things with it to make it more convenient to work with. So now I've swiveled over to the final side here. Now on day two, you're probably gonna use about half as much epoxy as you're using on day one. Because like I said, it really soaks it up on day one. Now when you come in and work on this area here, where the neck is, now I'm working on a classical guitar and I build my guitars with the neck on. You wanna make sure you don't leave a lot of residue in there or you're not gonna be able to get that blue tape off. So any residue? Now it gets wiped on the paper on my bench. I'll also come in and run a finger right along there just to make sure they have no runs or drips in that area. Something else I like to do is run a finger around the edge like that. Sometimes right on the edge of the binding, there'd be a run or a drip. So you go ahead and do that on the, both the front and the back side. If you decide to use a wood that's porous on your peg head, don't forget to fill that as well, and there's a special way I, I do that. So for doing the peg head, rather than run the chance of running drips and runs down inside in this area, what I like to do is just place a little bit on there and then come in with my finger and just run it around like that. That way I'm getting the pores filled but I have less of a chance of running it down inside areas where I don't want any of the epoxy. Make sure you run your finger around the edges so you don't get any runs or drips going around the side of the peg head. Not a big deal since I'm not done building this guitar, but if it were a finished guitar, you uh, want to take some precautions there. Okay, I've got epoxy, my first coat on the entire guitar. What I'm gonna do now is hang the guitar up. I'm gonna let it wait overnight. Now, they say like a three or four hour cure time. Don't believe it. I like to give it at least seven, eight hours so it fully cures. Tomorrow, I'm gonna to come back. This is gonna be day four of my class with a student. We're gonna continue building the guitar, doing our fret work, do it, finish carving the neck. At the end of the day, I'll turn the camera back on and I'll show you how to sand and do the second coat of epoxy. So, see you then. I forgot to mention that uh, you need to clean up your tools and alcohol is the solvent. And the bigger the bottle, the better. I use grain alcohol in my shop because I don't like the denatured stuff. So a little bit like that. And then you can just clean off your tools. They'll be ready to go for tomorrow. All right, welcome back to day two. Here's our guitar. I've now finished building the guitar. Neck is done. I've sanded it to 320, went ahead and did my pour fill. Like I said, I don't like doing a Z-Poxy pour fill on the neck because it gets into this end grain and to clean it all off of there, sand it all off is 
a lot of sanding more than I want to do. So the back and sides have one coat of pore fill. The top is now complete. It's been sanded to 320. I've masked off my bridge location. I put a seal coat of shellac on that. So let's start with the back. I have a few areas around the edges here that have a little bit of runs. So I'm going to come in with just a razor blade and get that. That way I don't have as much sanding to do. I want to make my sanding as easy as possible. So if I can get rid of any runs or drips, I think that's the way to go. Just take a razor blade or a scraper and that will take care of that for you. There's just a little bit more right here in the waist. I'm going to get that. I've also masked off my neck here because I don't want the epoxy to contaminate the uh, Spanish cedar. So once I get all the runs and drips off of there, I'm now going to sand it with 320 grit paper just to scuff sand it so the next coat of epoxy has something to bite into. Don't forget to do the peg head. Also, a razor blade works really well on the peg head. Keeps you from rounding over the edges. Keeping everything nice and flat. Also, if you happen to get a little bit of residue on the side, razor blade really helps get those little runs and drips off that happen to creep over the side there. Then if you want to finish it up with some sandpaper, you can. Keep in mind, right now I'm just scuff sanding it. I'm not taking it to bare wood necessarily. However, I do happen to go through to the wood in some areas where it's thin. Tomorrow, we got to take it all the way back to bare wood. So if you don't like sanding, when you apply your next coat, make sure you keep it nice and clean. Okay, now I think we're ready to apply a second coat of Z-Poxy. All right, I'm going to mix my Z-Poxy the same way I did yesterday. However, today I'm going to need a lot less of it. You may also notice that I have changed out the newspaper on my bench. Yesterday's news is old news. I want to stay current, so I read the current news as I'm working. Off camera, I also made sure that I sanded the bindings because you don't want any shiny areas on those. You want the epoxy to be able to have something to bite into. I also took some compressed air and made sure that I got all of the dust out of the pores. I want that z epoxy to go into the pores. So make sure that you clean them all out. And compressed air works really well for that. Okay, so just like yesterday, put a little bit on the back. You'll find that it goes a lot further on your second coat. Once again, I'm just using a squeegee, working across the grain. Now, what kind of finishes can you use z epoxy as a pour fill under? Just about anything. However, you may want to put a wash coat of shellac or a barrier in there of shellac if you think you might have any compatibility issues with the product you're using as your top coat. Keep it nice and clean because anything that's left on there you have to sand off tomorrow. So really scrape it back. I find that if I stand up on my scraper or on my uh, squeegee at about a 90 degree angle you can really scrape it off well. Keep a nice thin coat on there. Now this stuff sands fairly easily, so don't get you know don't beat yourself up if you leave a little bit on the surface in the way of a squeegee mark. You may find also that depending on the species of wood and how well you did your surface prep, you may want to come in and do a third coat. I find that two coats is usually enough for what I'm doing. Alright, I'm going to go over to my LMI vacuum clamp now. 
and clamp it up so I can work on the sides. So as you're doing your sides, don't get too carried away and let it roll over onto the top. Now the top does have a seal coat of shellac. So if you happen to get any on the top, just put a little alcohol on your uh, cloth or whatever and then wipe it on there and it should wipe right off. Be very careful up here in this area, around where the net comes in. You don't want to leave a lot of residue there. When I get done at the end of the session, like I showed you yesterday, I run my finger along there and get rid of any residue, any buildup. If you get too much buildup in there, it's hard to remove your tape as well. I know what you guys are thinking. You're thinking, man, how does he do that without getting it rolling over onto the top? It's actually pretty easy to do. That is, keep it off the top. I guess if you get real sloppy with it, you could wind up getting it on the top. But I haven't really had much of that problem. I've heard about it, though. Happened to a friend of mine once. Alrighty, wipe off the excess, clean up your equipment, and then we're looking at a third day to sand everything back to bare wood. Don't forget to run your finger around the edge, catch any runs or drips, do that on the top and on the back. Also, if you want to run a finger along here, also don't forget to do your peg head, I almost forgot. Don't forget to do that peg head. All right, welcome back to day three. I've allowed the uh, epoxy to sit overnight. Did the back and sides once again, kept it as clean as possible. I'm gonna start by removing all of the epoxy. I'm gonna start here on the uh, peg head. I'm gonna start with my razor blade. Scrape the majority off so I don't have as much sanding to do. Also, like I said, it helps keep everything nice and square rather than rounding off edges. And then once you get the majority off, you can come in with sandpaper. What I'm going to be using is 320 grit and a backing pad. And you want to sand all of the epoxy off until you have nothing left except in the pores. And that means any little shiny area is a low spot. So get it all the way down so that there's no shiny area. If you start to see some blotchiness, that means you still have you're sanding through your layers of your epoxy and you want to make sure you get that all the way off all the way back to bare wood. I now have the peg head completely leveled. If you notice that you have any opaque areas or little cloudy dark areas, that's because you still have epoxy on there. So keep sanding to get all of that off. Now that I've got the peg head done, I'm going to go to the back and the sides. And I'm going to start with a power sander. I'm going to start with 320 grit and then I'm going to finish everything by hand. I can't get up by the neck this area here with the power sander and the waste has a little bit of trouble. So I'm going to make sure I get all of that by hand. You want to finish by hand anyway to remove any of the uh, marks left by the sander. So here we go. So I spent a few quality minutes doing some sanding with all of the, uh, the palm sander at 320. And there's a very fine line between uh, too aggressive and just getting it level. You don't want to sand all the way through your epoxy fill and open up more pores. But you do need to get all of the epoxy off. Next thing I'm going to do is come in by hand. I'm going to get these areas here around the heel block that I couldn't get with my sander. Also, I'm going to spend some time in the waste. And then I'm going to hit everything with 320 by hand to get rid of any of the power sanding marks. So here we go. When I get all done sanding, I like to take a soft rag and just wipe off the majority of the dust. The rest of it I leave on there and work, I use it to my advantage, let it work in my favor. 
If there's any little small pore that didn't get filled, usually that dust takes care of it. You're now ready to go over the top with your favorite top coat. Now, as a precaution, you may want to put a wash coat of shellac in there as a seal coat, depending on the top coat you're going to be putting over it. But that, my friends, is how I apply a Z-Poxy pore fill. So Matt in Alaska, thank you very much for that question. Like I said, that's one I get a lot about what kind of pore filler to use and how to apply it. So that one was the one that I have not done yet. I've got many other videos on YouTube that show various products and methods for pore filling. But now I'm going to have one about z as well. So thank you very much and happy pore filling. Mm -hmm.